Welcome to Learn Yourself. Today we are going to solve some of the question answers from the chapter number 5, Periodic Classification of Animals. This chapter is under CBSE Standard 10 syllabus. These questions are from page number 85. First question is, use Mendeleev's periodic table to predict the formula for the oxides of the following elements. Now, just check the Mendeleev's periodic table where he wrote the molecular formula for all the oxides and all the hydrides. Because he checked the molecular formula of all the elements placed in that particular group and he derived a generalized formula for that. So here I have written those generalized formula to write the molecular formula for that. In this, the R is the element. This we have already discussed when we have learned the Mendeleev's periodic table. If you have any doubt regarding this molecular formula and how he had derived, just check my video based on Mendeleev's periodic table. So here in this, these are the generalized molecular formula for all of this elements group. So these are the 1 1 elements and I have written this generalized molecular formula for that particular group. So here potassium is there. So R is that particular element and O means the oxygen is attached to that. Now if we will not see this then also we can write from this that we will see it later. But let us derive from Mendeleev's periodic table because that's what they have asked us. So here this is the generalized molecular formula. You can write here that generalized formula. And here we will write the oxides formula. So R is our element. So we will write here K and R2 is there. So it is K2O. Now R is our element. So it is C and O2 means O2. R is our element, so Al2 and here O3. Now R is our element, so Si and O2. Then Ba, so R is Ba here, Ba and O. So these are the oxides formula. What all they have given to us. Now, if you do not know this generalized formula, then how to write it? Then it is easy when you know the valency of each and every element. Now here potassium's combining capacity is 1, whereas oxygen's combining capacity is 2. So by a crisscross method, we can write K2O. Similarly, we can derive all the molecular formula for all these oxides. Now we have to write carbon's oxide. So we know that it is carbon dioxide. Here we are not going through the combining capacity because this is a covalent bond. So we have to write a direct molecular formula that CO2. Now here aluminium oxide. So here Al and O. So aluminium's valency is 3 whereas oxygen's valency is 2. So here we will get Al2O3. Now similarly for silicon dioxide SiO2 and for barium oxide that is BaO. So that is how we have to write and in this manner we need to remember the molecular formula of all these important oxides. Our next questions are 2 and 3. So in that second Besides gallium, which other elements have since been discovered that were left by Mendeleev in his periodic table? That means he placed some of the vacant places in his periodic table. So after that, after he has given the periodic table, the scientists have found out those elements with the help of those places which Mendeleev has put vacant in his periodic table. So those elements we need to write here. So they were gallium, scandium and the last one is germanium. So these were the three elements which have been found out through the vacant places 
left in Mendeleev's periodic table. Now third question. What were the criteria used by Mendeleev in creating his periodic table? So he used two criteria to arrange the element. First is he has arranged all the elements in increasing order of their atomic mass. Second is he also compared their molecular formulas and properties when the specific element will form a compound with hydrogen and oxygen. So their hydrides and oxides property and molecular formula he compared. So these two criteria we have to write here. The first one is he arranged according to the increasing order of their atomic masses and the second is he compared formula so he placed all those elements in the same group which all elements are having the same generalized formula through hydride and oxides so these were the two main criteria of his arrangement The fourth question is, do you think the noble gases are placed in a separate group? So the answer is yes. We need to place them separately because they are different from other elements. How? They all are extremely inert gases. They will not react so easily. Why? Because their outermost shells are completely filled or each of the noble gases have complete 8 electrons in their outermost shell. And they are in very low quantity in atmosphere or we can write that they are in traces in the atmosphere. We do not have their large amount or portion in our atmosphere. So due to all these properties and they all have the similar kinds of properties, these properties. So that's why they should be placed separately in separate groups.